In this RouteCAD application video, we will describe how to perform a tapping operation with the RouteCAD CADCAM software. We have designed a workpiece, cylindrical workpiece, with a bore. The bore has already been done at the proper diameter. We also have designed a chuck holding tool. All have been done with a keep out of route line, which means that these lines will not be routed and they are there for illustrative purposes. We also um, imported a DXF file, um, basically a tapping tool that, we, that was a picture that we turned into a DXF and then we merge it into that drawing. Actually, this is a true uh, vector file. Each element is either a line or an arc. We could use it for whatever we wanted to do in this drawing, but for this drawing, we only merge this uh, for illustrative purposes. Now, all the lines in red are construction line, and they are not keep out line, which means they can be routing, and they, cannot be, they can also be part of the routing sequence. But... Um, it is important to understand that we are not planning to route, to, to route that cutting tool or route these um, dimensions, but only the point at the contact line that will form the top will be routed, and everything else is only there for illustrative purposes. Now, basically, when we're tapping, is we have the chuck spinning in coordination with the z-axis motion, and uh, all we need to do is to define where we want the, the tap to start. To do that, we will basically use the wizard. So we go to wizard, and we're going to select contour of revolution and operation. And we will go to the tapping operation tab. Now, the tapping operation tab is quite simple. There are only three parameters. The first parameter is the A parameter, which is how deep inside the material we want to create the top. The second one is the distance above the contact point. The contact point is always at the surface of the revolving workpiece, and this is the point that we will select to make that top. Now, the last parameter is the TPI, or thread per inch. In this case, we want to do 10 thread per inch. Now, we're going to exit that um, pocket tool and show what happens if we want to work in metric. If we want to go to work in metric, we make sure we go to unit and we select metric. And if we go back to the wizard, we will see something change. First of all, all the dimensions are in centimeter. The depth of the top, which was one inch, is 2.54 centimeter. The distance above contact point, which was 0.3 inch, is now one centimeter. And the, now we don't using thread per inch for metric, but we're using the pitch. In this case, we have a pitch of 2.54 centimeter uh, millimeter, which is equivalent to 10 thread per inch. Now we want to create that tab. To do so, we just click on the make a tap operation and we gonna f we will need to also click the next thing on the very first point to create the tap now the or the point at the contact now this is a point so we're going to make sure that we have snap option point selected and we go on the point and we click the mouse left mouse button now basically we got a warning before making a tap operation, you must uncheck keep of route. Okay, now this is also important because you cannot, uh, a tapping operation is a true operation, is not for illustrative purposes of those uh, keep out of route lines. So the software is telling us to go to option and uncheck keep, our, keep out of routing. We've unchecked it, everything is fine. And then we're going to click on that point. Now the tapping operation has been performed. What we basically see here is if we go view show route, this is normally the uh, diameter of the tapping tool, 
But because in the configuration, we didn't set this to the exact diameter of the tapping tool, that's why we see as a smaller diameter. Uh, it's not that important to do it because when we export the G-code, it won't make a difference. But for only for these purposes, if we want this to look like what will happen when it goes in, we just go to the, configure, to the configuration and we set the round tool diameter the same as the diameter of the cutting tool. So now let's see what happens. We're going to go view, we're going to uncheck show route, and we're going to zoom this uh, area over here zoom this window so the software did two things the first thing it did it put a route a very first point a routed point uh one centimeter away from the contact point so this is the very first thing normally this is the center or origin of the tool before it start the job then the tool will move quickly to the very first we're going to go view display route arrow it will move to the very first contact point and then it will start to perform the tap and as it's moving in the Z axis, uh, the A axis will move in synchronization with the Z axis and make, and make the tap. And then it will retract itself from the tap at the same time. And the tap, and then go back again to the last point above. And then the tapping will be done. One thing uh, that we need to mention is we can also. Um, control the direction of uh, rotation of the spindle by setting in the wizard the control version the um, basically the uh, sign of the pitch if we put the sign positive the uh, it will move it will ro rotate the a the a axis in a positive way if it puts if we put a negative number it will rotate in a negative way but it will always synchronize the z axis and the a axis such that it perform a tapping operation and one small thing of interest if we go to the configuration panel and in the configuration panel we basically go to the uh, um, to the rapid cut and down rate if, if we set a zero speed for the spindle, uh, the spindle, it will, the, 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 when the G-code is exported, it will not export a spindle speed because um, we have to keep in mind that when we are doing tapping operation, the, the spindle axis must be the A axis. So we've got to make sure that uh, we, we make the A axis we make the spindle axis the A axis and it becomes a rotary axis. And in the G code, the information for a rotary axis is in degree. So we've got to make sure that um, in our controller, we set the A axis as a rotary axis in degree. Um, also, if we are just doing regular late work, um, we might not set the A axis as rotary. We could, we can just uh, uh, take, uh, we can just set the ax, the A axis to, to 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 turn at the spindle speed specified when the G code is exported. So basically, two two modes. One mode where the Z axis, when the A axis is turning at the spindle speed, this is one mode of operation for normal uh, CNC late work. But for tapping and threading, we got to make sure that the A axis is uh, set as a rotary axis and is going to follow uh, what the G code is setting it to do. So when this the G code is exported, there will be a synchronized move between the Z axis and the A axis to perform that threading operation. Now, when we are happy with this threading, which was quite simple to do, we just go to machine and we export G code for CNC late.